this week on the Linux Action Show. The WebOS team just lost their lead designer. We'll tell you where he is headed. Then we cover the release of Mego 1.0 and just where it fits in in an Android-powered world. Plus, find out how you can shoot us in the face for our birthday. Live. Oh, this week of the Linux Action Show. And welcome to the Linux Action Show, Season 12, Episode 3. My name is Brian, with me for the first time ever, Chris. Hey, Brian. McDonald's runs Linux. Say what? Not like the whole thing? Or just like the french fries? No, they're starting to do this game kiosk deal where you go up to the screen what? and they have these touch screens where you can play video games and like educational games and stuff of like course. that. And... Um, they're pretty slick and all that. What? And an, and a uh, a, a viewer noticed this. His name was Robert, so I wanted to say thank you very much, Robert, for Way sending this Way to go, Robert. In. And uh, he noticed, doot, 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 doot. Oh, one of them uh, crashed. Oh, yeah. And it was a boot screen. And he uh, he also pointed me to the fix. It turns out the file system was uh, trashed. It's running ext2, not ext3. Oh. But he went ahead and gave them the uh, tips they need to fix their file system problem in his blog post. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's called the power of open source, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know what? So when you're at McDonald's getting your kids fat, or yourself fat like I do, you can now play video games. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, of course, watch out because the screens might be a little greasy. They are touchscreen Dude, after all. seriously. McDonald's touchscreen sounds like the world's worst idea. Yeah, yeah. But seriously, like, like, I know they say, like, for little kids, you're supposed to expose them to lots of germs so that they get all healthy. Yeah. They say that, right? Yeah, yeah, it yeah. sounds like really retarded to me, but I know they say That's that. That's why I usually I often just take Dylan to a, like a nearby hospital and drop him off. Say good luck, kid. Good luck. Do yeah. a good job. I will see you on Thursday. Yeah. 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 Uh, Come but, home but sick, seriously, Dylan. It seems like there's no way around it. If you take your kid to to McDonald's and have him play with a touch screen, he's going to get tuberculosis. <laughs> like how 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 else, right? I know, I know. But what else are you going to do? Yep. No, but, that's all I can think of. But maybe what they could do is like uh, uh, somebody in the chat room. <laughs> it is, it's a diabetes and video games come. I was mentioning in the chat room <laughs> for the live stream that maybe they could slip in a little video poker to do a little er early training. Think about that. If you could feed your kids and oh, teach yeah. them to be a card shark, right? That's pretty much a father's you're, dream right there. You're feeding them and giving them a life skill. Wow. That's what we're here on this earth for. Hey, Chris. Yeah, Brian. Way to be a good dad. I think, sir. You know what? I just downloaded a new game for my Droid that I want to talk about in my Android pick this week. But before I do that, I thought perhaps, because we also have a few more minutes before it's done downloading, perhaps, <laughs> live show, baby, <laughs> we give uh, a little thanks to our buddies over at GoDads. Oh, that is an incredible idea, because this episode of the Linux Action Show is sponsored in part by GoDaddy.com, the world's largest domain host and domain name registrar. Domain host. Host. They're just the largest host. Doesn't matter if it's a domain. Doesn't matter if it's not a domain. They're the host. You don't even have to have a domain there. But no. why would you? That'd be but crazy. You can host. Because they're GoDaddy. They're you GoDaddy do and they're .com. Uh, if you're ready to make an impact online, as this ad copy I'm reading says in front of me, GoDaddy.com has got you covered. Domain names as low as $1.99 plus world-class hosting with unlimited disk space. Seriously, you can fill it up with pictures of kittens. You could have 80 billion terabytes of kitten pictures and go to .com and be like, whatever, unlimited disk space and bandwidth. Plus, do-it-yourself website builders, dedicated servers, SSL certificates, and so much more. You don't even have to know what an SSL certificate it is. Just order three of them. Yeah, but You're going to want them. Yeah. They're going to be great. Yeah. Uh, plus, as a Linux Action Show listener, viewer, etc., enter promo code Linux, L-I-N-U-X, at checkout and save an additional 10% off of your entire order. Yeah, buddy. If you happen to order waffles from GoDaddy.com, this will save you 10% off those waffles. And I wanted to say something. Uh, GoDaddy.com has a WordPress hosting cell right now. I don't know why. If you're going to do a blog, why you went to WordPress, because the plugins are awesome just right there. Seriously. They have, they're have they having it for super cheap, 7 bucks a month. The offer ends, though, on our birthday, June 4th. Actually, our birthday is June 6th. I oh, believe. okay. Close to our birthday. Yeah. So you can, you can get that. Hold on. Hold on, I, I closed it. I'm going to bring up Wikipedia. No, you're right. Here. It was June 6th. Which no, 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 no. I don't want to be wrong here. Everybody, everybody, oh. everybody, no. hold on. No, you got to do. No, hold on. We're not going to talk for a while. Okay. I'm just going to look up Linux Action Show on Wikipedia. Here's Linux where we wait Action for Show. Brian. Do, 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 do. June 6th, yeah. everybody. <laughs> Wikipedia says June 6th. And we should say 6th. what we're doing for June 6th, and we're really excited. Okay, so this episode, 
was going to be all about video games. Was uh, was going to be nothing but games, but we're going to be straight with you guys. We didn't get a chance to play video games. So what we're doing <laughs> like all week, like the, this was my, my, my half of my plan for yesterday was I was going to sit around and play video games. Totally. I have a list of probably 20 different games that are either old games I haven't tried in a while or some new games or, or some of the games I bought from the humble indie bundle. Yep. I was going to go through and just really play the heck that out of my them. thinking. Uh, I played games for like two minutes, yep. maybe three. I loaded a couple of games and I'm like, oh, those are there. And then I had to go do other stuff. Yep. But then. Then Ugh. we had ourselves a brainstorm, everyone. Yes. Now, uh, we're giving this to you a week ahead of time, so listen up right now. If you want to play with us and kill us on our birthday, we will be playing these games live on the air June 6th. That's oh, yeah. a Sunday. Our birthday, our four-year anniversary, you can kill us in-game. We're going to play Tremulous, Urban Terror, Nexuiz, and maybe, if there's enough requests, you got to tell us at jupitercolony.com, 0 AD. Nice. So nice. Tremulous, Urban Terror, Next You Is, and Zero AD. I'll put links yeah. to those games in this episode show notes, and we'll be doing network games of those live with the chat room so, next episode. So get them installed, brush up on your skills all week, and then shoot us on our, then, on our birthday. And then shoot Brian and Chris from the Linux Action Show. What I'd really like is for like just like a thousand people to gang up on oh. just me and Chris. I'm being told in the chat room that maybe Zero AD isn't ready yet, so we'll just stick oh, with okay. that. So we'll, Tremulous, I haven't played Zero AD. Terror, the the screenshots look cool, yeah. but... Uh, but uh, Dude, seriously. Check out Ur Zero Urban AD. Terror and Next Ways and Tremulous. That'll be great. I'm gonna. I'll skip putting a link in the show notes so that way there's no confusion. But check out. Uh, go to wildfiregames.com and check out Zero AD. It looks awesome. Uh, they're saying this is the birthday beatdown. I, I'm gonna officially dub this the Action Birthday Beatdown. Yeah, it doesn't need to have action. 2010. Hey, speaking of games, before we go on, why don't we talk about my Android pick? You want to do that? Ah, uh, sure. All right. So the, I, I thought uh, in the picks that I've been doing at the beginning of every show for Android. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. It lost connection. Well, I won't be able to show you the game, but awesome. Uh, I wanted to feature a game, and I've heard really, really good things. And it's uh, there's a free version and a pay version, so I thought this would be a great one to start out with. Plus, it's a little retro. It's Super KO Boxing Two. Now, uh, Brian, you're probably familiar with Punch Out. Yeah, right? it's like a cell shaded looking version of Mike Tyson's yeah. Punch Out. Yep, exactly. Um, and it's what I cool. like is they have an ad supported version, and the ads, uh, from what I read, don't come up all like up in your face. During the game, it's more like during loading screens and stuff. And one of the first things that happens is because on these Androids, you can store stuff on the SD cards that yeah. we don't use up. There's kind of limited internal memory, like only like 256 megabytes or something cheap. Show like enough. That. And so this game, when you download it, it's an 86 megabyte game. The actual Ooh. downloader from the marketplace is like 800 kilobytes. And then what it'll do is once you launch it, it'll say, hey, would you like me to download the game content to your phone memory? Or the SD card. Nice. I went ahead and said SD card to save myself the memory because I got plenty of space on there. And then it starts doing a download. Oh, that's uh, nice. A little pro tip for you. I just learned this the hard way. Don't be on cellular because it takes forever. So switch on your Wi-Fi before you download <laughs> that 86 megs. <laughs> but go check out Super KO Boxing 2. And if you really love it, uh, maybe give the dev a, a thanks and, and buy the 99 cent version, which has no ads. Oh sure, that's that's rad. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it when applications let you store the game data files like on an external storage. Yeah, totally. Because that's great. You can you can pull that SD card, and also um, this is kind of a knock on Android. Sometimes the new OSs require a total wipe of the phone, like it won't bring all your application data and settings. Yeah. So any app that stores its settings on the SD card will still be there. You're when good you to reload. go. It's like having your data on a separate partition. So I likes that. So anyway, Super KO Boxing Two. I'll have a link to it in the show notes. Check it out and let us know what you think. All right. Rad pants. All right, Brian, what do you say? Let's do the news. What's new in the news this week? Oh, right, Brian. Our top story on the news docket this week is tablets, 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 Jeez, tablets. Jeez, mother of mercy, it Linux, really is. Linux tablets all coming out the wazoo, Brian. Dell has unveiled their Android based tablet called Streak. Now, uh, picture something slightly bigger than your Nokia N900s or N810s Yeah. Um, with a custom, at least in the screenshot, a custom UI on top of Android. And it's got a little wallpaper on it that looks like you're going through a wormhole. Yeah. Which excites me. Yeah. I love going yeah. through tablet-sized it's, wormholes. It's going to have Bluetooth, 3G, um, Wi-Fi, all the... It's almost like everything a phone has except for an earpiece. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, for sure. The specs alone are selling me. One gigahertz Snapdragon processor, five megapixel mm. 
camera. Nice. Uh, two gigabytes of internal storage. Remember, I think I was just saying my original Droid has 256 megabytes. It's going to have two gigs. That's better. That's more That's yeah. more megabytes. More plus, is better nowadays. Plus, this little tablet's going to have micro yeah. SD like you'd come to expect. Uh, should be available later this year, shipping with Android 2.2. And, of course, also, if you want it, Flash 10.1. Ah, uh, that's what I'm talking little about. Four, little, uh, little, uh, little, 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 little device here running Android. Uh, it looks really, really nice cool. Nice looking device. Along with that, another company uh, is, and it's called the Streak, which makes right. me think of college people having fun when and they get drunk uh, through the quad. And it also is very, very close to Steak, which I like Steak. Yes. So I actually um, thought it was Steak at first, um, and then I realized it was Streak. Slightly disappointed. I thought, you know what? Hey, Dell. Steak, that's bold. Streak is fun. That's though. spicy and bold. Who streak wants is a fun. streak. You want a streak. I do like you the want streak. A streak. And I'm excited it's Dell making a, a, an Android based tablet. And after you streak, you want a steak. So, therefore, this tablet, a winner. The next one, see now this Dell, we don't really have a firm release date or a price. This next one, it's from Ramos or R A M O S. Uh, this with little the, device. The, a, the R and the A are capitalized. Right, because that, that's high tech. And the M O S are lowercase, so it's Ramos or this something. Thing, this thing's pretty slick looking, and they've already got a price. It's going to be 146 bucks. Whoa. Uh, really super Holy cheap. Moly. It's supposedly going to have uh, 3G, but perhaps no uh, um, supplemented plans or anything like that. It's going to be full full freight. That's fine. Yeah, it's totally fine. Um, 146 Not sure on the bucks, specs, though. though uh, I know, super cheap, right? Dude, how big is it? Uh, they don't say on the on this page, but I think if I remember, recall, if I recall, it was slightly uh, five point three inches or something. I want to say something like that. It was decent size, not super small, not super big. What, what, what mid. country is that from? China. It's from China. Yeah. All right, so it's uh, it's in China. If you guys are thinking one hundred forty six dollars, why why the heck one hundred forty six? It's nine hundred ninety nine. You want? Well, you want to know? You want to hear what the dig is so far? So, so that kind of that kind of makes sense. This isn't shipping yet, but the dig so far is that it runs Android one five. Wait, how would it run Android one five? Like, why? I think that's just their dev unit. I don't know. Oh. And then we've got. I mean, this is just a week of tablets, Brian. It's been crazy. Uh, we've got another one, mm. Evie Group. Uh, this one they're calling the Wallet Tablet. It's going to include Chrome as well, if you want the Chrome browser. Well, that's nice. And uh, it looks really good, and it's fully functional. And they're if you're watching the video version right now, we're showing a. Uh, little demonstration of the unit. It's a good hand size unit. Now, okay, so I've just covered three back-to-back -back tablets, and the reason I wanted to talk about them is because I think this is becoming the big news story is um, these companies are all just about to come to market, and they're going to flood the market with competitors to the iPad that all run Android, all run Dude, Linux. And Yeah, Android is becoming like the tablet thing. It's right? the thing. It's pretty guys. wild. It's pretty wild that you just have all these different varieties. And because it's not being built by one manufacturer, we're getting various different form factors. I do which, like that. Which, which can be good or bad from a software consistency standpoint, but it at least gives consumers a lot of different options, You know, which it's is actually, awesome. It's not, it's not that bad on the Android side of things since on the phone side for Android, there was already so many different sizes of resolutions and whatnot mm -hmm. that, I mean, the developers have already had to take in, you know, like the resolution independence uh, for right. their applications. Right. So, so why not take it a step further and, uh, and keep going crazy with it? I agree. I think it's awesome, and I think that a lot of these a lot of these little devices aren't just like at the conceptual stage. Yeah. They're actually getting to the stage now where they have the pre-packaging, where they're getting like for their final packaging designs. They have uh, the final operating systems in place. They're getting the final uh, content agreements in place. Yeah. So these things, we're, we're not talking like these things are going to be the end of the year. We're talking these things are like the end Soon. of June, Yeah, which is awesome. Like, like this next month. That's that's awesome. Yeah, dude, we're gonna have so many toys to play with. It's gonna 2010 is gonna be the year of the gadgets, the handheld powered computer gadgets. Like it's just nuts. It's incredible. Yeah, I'm, uh, I I'm think it's right. I think it's quite quite cool. Cause I, I mean, I've been a tablet guy for for a couple of years now. Yep. I mean, I mean, I, was, I swear by a tablet form factor. And that Nokia so. was way ahead of the game here. Dude, the Nokia is. We'll we'll, we'll talk a fair bit about yeah, Nokia we'll later in the yeah. show, but yeah. uh, but way ahead of the game. This guy's this guy's jumping ship and heading over to Google. Yeah, so he's le he's leaving Palm and he's going to Google, and that wasn't a a, a for sure thing until just a couple of days ago. They, we, the, he, him leaving WebOS was confirmed. Going to Google was then later concern, confirmed by All Things D, which is a which is like the um, Wall Street Journal's digital yeah. technical division, and he is leaving to go to Android. Yeah, that could be a huge shakeup. Android, that's I'll be, nuts. I'll be honest, I love my Droid. But 
compared to WebOS, it is uh, ugly. It's true. Now I've got it's I've true, got man. I've got a theme, and that's why you know you, you can make an Android and phone HTC look pretty cool. HTC has their yeah. Sense UI, and it looks pretty cool. Looks all right. No, it looks pretty cool. Let's but WebOS. I'm digging all about web WebOS looks lickable. Yeah, WebOS WebOS is the best looking phone there is out there right now, in my opinion. I mean, like I love the Mamo N900 look and feel. It looks gorgeous. I think, but WebOS looks way better. I feel, and I and and the iPhone, the iPhone looked kind of cool when it first came out, but it's kind of like. It, it, it's like all it's Mac it's products. Been there, and then it's like all Mac products. When Mac products first come out, everyone freaks out and looks at them, and they're like, "Those buttons are blue," and they freak out and they love them. They're like, "Cool, Windows have pinstripes now. I love pinstripes on my Windows." <laughs> and then, and then, like three or four years later, you look back at old Apple products and you think, "Oh my God, that looks dated, and it looks so 1990s." But they do that, dates, though. They do that on purpose fast. to make you buy new stuff. It's like the Detroit design. You yeah, know? but what I'm saying is, like, you look Web at OS like just looks Web classy, OS, though. it looks simple and classy. Like, like mm -hmm. I can see the this general look and feel, maybe with minor revisions, being very classy five oh, to ten years from geez. now. Jeez, if you put this on Android, I would freak the f out. Yeah, it looks great. They they did a really really great job. Yeah. Now the now the hardware is a whole different story. I think there's some hardware issues there, uh, especially on the Pixie, the little tiny one. Yeah. Whoa, oh yeah. boy. I, that, it that was underpowered. Needs it needed to be. It needed to be a gigahertz. Yeah, and it needed to be a different form factor almost. I, but, yeah. But but honestly. The, the OS stack, though, the look and feel is just gorgeous. So if that guy can Do bring... Do you recall, is it apped on the back end, too? Isn't something like you can... Something like that. Something pretty universal. Yeah. It's just... Um, it and looks so great. And then also it's one of the great phenomenal. things about Palm OS is um, sort of they just... I don't know. I think they've always just gotten the simplicity of use but power underneath. And yeah. I just think it's a super impressive product. And I'm really, really excited about, about that guy going to Google and purting up Google. Because I do think the iPhone has an overall more consistent looking UI than the Android, um, but I think maybe Palm OS has is just as equal in that category. So maybe he'll, if nothing else, if he can just come to Google, even if he doesn't revolutionize the UI, if he just yeah. makes it consistent so that the OK button is always in one spot, it's not sometimes on the other side where the cancel <laughs> button sometimes is, <laughs> stuff like that, yeah. you know, yeah. or like a lot of times in Android, if you hold your button, hold tap. You get a whole list of menu for stuff you never even knew was there. Yeah. So in one way, it's like I keep discovering stuff, but at the same time, I'm like, I would have liked to have known that two months ago. Yeah. Yeah. Could be a little more sure. intuitive. And, and and realistically, let's be totally honest. Uh, there's a lot of the Android UI that still looks like a developer UI. Like the buttons, even the buttons in and of themselves, they look mm -hmm. they look like the kind of buttons I'd create if I weren't. They you are, know, because I'm not an artist. They are I one mean, of the first thing too that changes with the themes. It's it's like it's all replaceable. Everything's replaceable. They just they haven't just gone have to the designer. trouble. Yeah, yeah, they haven't done that yet. <laughs> it's now, just the, what they've been every every three and a half days. There's a new Android update that adds amazing new features and awesome new speed, but they've yet to really make the UI new and awesome yeah. and, and really and really. I mean, amazing. they're getting there. They're getting there with amazing yeah. features. They're getting there with software. Now you get the but UI. This guy, there. this guy, this guy could bring the ring. What would it take for you to want to switch to an Android phone? Um, Faster. Honestly, Honestly, no. I'm I'm a whole different guy at you this want, point. You're, you're I more, want a whole well, we'll open phone. Why don't we yeah, save that for we'll the next segment? It. All right. Well, uh, before we move on, uh, is there anything else you wanted to cover? No. All right. I do not want to cover anything else. Well, I did want to say, if you'd like to support the show, you can head over to store.jupiterbroadcasting.com. It's amazing. Where we've got all kinds of picks there, especially if you notice right here. That's Brian's microphone. That's my microphone. And, and here's the thing. We've got that. That's a really, really relatively inexpensive microphone. 50 bucks. But I love this guy. It, I, it is I've unbelievable. Tried, I've tried newer microphones. I've tried expensive mm -hmm. microphones. I've tried headsets. I've tried lapel yep. mics and yep. everything. They're good mics. For some reason, I come back to this. It For 50 up, bucks, you get good sound. It picks up a lot of noise around the That's room. True. That's true. Uh, so you got to have a real quiet room yeah. to use this mic. Yeah. But uh, I love the sound yeah. quality of if it. If you'll notice, we have two mics that are different. This one uh, is... More direct. See, if I go over, hey, hi, everybody, how you doing? Now oh, I'm my over, gosh. Whoa, where's everybody at? I'm over here now. So this one is really good when it goes in comparison with this MXL because this one doesn't pick up the room. So they're really two good mics that go side to side. They're great mics. Side side. The yeah, other mic that's super easy because that one, that MXL is great, but if you want something super easy, we also have the Blue Snowball, which also has pretty good sound, and you just plug it into USB. And with the later distros, it works, works out of the it box. It works in Linux. So that's store.jupiterbroadcasting.com if you want to give us a little... Love. It's gorgeous. All right, everyone. Well, that's all the news for this week. This week, Mego 1.0 shipped. 
Now, in this segment, we're going to talk a little bit about Mego and where we're kind of seeing it fitting in the overall Linux gadget ecosystem. And uh, we uh, started out with, I attempted, I over, oh, stand by. I have over here an MSI Wind. You sure do. And uh, this MSI Wind was supposed to be my Mego machine. Your Mego test rig, yeah. But there is a little bug right now, and it looks it looks like uh, they already know about it. I saw it in their bug tracker where the wireless and the uh, touchpad on the U100 MSI Wind are not working right now. Like the driver's yeah. there, but it's just not initializing properly. So I didn't get a chance to run it physically, though we've both been following the project a lot. A lot. A great, so, ridiculous deal. We should deal. say, first of all, uh, Mego, if you're not familiar with it, is the combination of uh, two different companies' efforts. Right. So so basically, Mego is taking Mamo uh, from the Nokia side of things, which is based in turn on Hilden, which is a Debian-based distribution geared towards mobile devices. Okay. Uh, very GTK-centric, but moving towards QT. And Moblin, which is Intel's... Right. Uh, RPM based currently, though right. at one point it was also Debian based, and it, and, it jumps and all over the And interestingly enough, map. really the uh, Mamo platform was originally designed to focus on ARM processors, yes. and uh, and Moblin for the Intel side. Yeah, yeah. So, so, but in, in the Moblin was for mobile internet devices, not tablets and netbooks. Yeah. So that's I have an itch on my nose. I'm sorry, buddy. Do you want me to get it for you? Oh, I, I got just it. have at it. Oh, you only man. just have at it. I just it? had this itch in the corner of my nose. Does that drive you crazy? I've, I've got, I've got epics. I've got uh, the the oh. stash. The stash scratch maneuver is oh, patented over here. Oh, man, oh, 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 little stash the scratch. Side of my nose is just driving little me crazy. Little stash crash. What were we what? talking about? Uh, well, we were saying. Oh yes. Yeah, so so okay. So these two have merged together. Yeah. Slam. Married. Uh, and boom, we have me go. Uh, theoretically, we'll get those on Nokia phones and tablets and Intel tablets and and uh, Intel will push it for various netbooks. And, and I'm going to make a little side note. I'm not a huge fan of the name me go. Nah. But I did discover it wasn't just like some. Hey, this is hip. Yeah. This actually makes me. It's actually the me go name was registered by like a Linux foundation of some type like a dozen years ago. Really. So it's not just like. This is hip and trendy. This was like, we need to do this. We've got this. All right. <laughs> That's not so bad, right? That's not, because then it's like a little less Nintendo Wii and a little more like just trying to emphasize that it's something you use on the go. Yep. So, all right. Uh, first of all, I want to say, I think as far as tablet OSs go, Mego is the hotness so far. It, it does have a lot. That's nice. And it's got it. a little, and in fact, one of the reasons why you can't put it in a, in a VM like a virtual box instance to test it is it requires 3D acceleration. Yep. Uh, that's interesting. And all of the little menu effects and everything have little pop-outs, little little niceties. It looks very nice. I mean, it has a very flat 2D look to it, but it's all 3D accelerated so it all has, you know, nice subtle effects and it's just it's fairly classy looking yet it's very simple looking. Uh, yeah. I don't want to spend too much time on the look and feel because there's a lot of other things to And it's to changing get to. too. Um, but uh, some of the things that that are worth noting, uh, scroll back up just a little bit. All go right. back to the screenshots. Um Oh, right there, right there. Go go down a little bit, the one with the grid. Oh, yeah, I like this one uh, a lot. Now, you look at things like this, and th it's very, very reminiscent of both the Littles UI. Um, mm. It's like a more complicated version of the Littles tablet, uh, where they have, you know, uh, small little thumbnail versions yep. of all the different browser windows and everything else, yep. uh, as well as the current uh, N900 MAMO 5. UI. And what I but these little these little thumbnail blocks you can set up different uh, individual zones. So you can have like you can have like your yeah your game zone, my email news zone, and you can have all these different little block areas corn sectioned off. So that way you don't have like option overload when you don't want to look at video games. You don't want option overload. You don't want option you don't overload. want option overload. So that's very cool. The UI looks good. It looks interesting. It looks clean, um, and it looks very approachable for like kids and stuff. So that's Absolutely. very nice. It's very colorful. Yeah. Um, now, so 1.0 is available for netbooks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not available currently in any way, shape, or form for handheld devices. The 1.0 for handheld devices will ship about August is what I'm hearing. Maybe, right. Maybe July, maybe August. Um, and that will ship not officially. It will ship unofficially as a development release only for the Nokia N900. Mm. There will not ever be a official Mego commercial release for the N900. Right. The N900 series will always stay... Called it. Mamo-based. Called it. This is um, 
disappointing. Now, the, but you as a dev can still get now. Now, as a dev, you can still you can currently today install the whole thing. Uh, but the Memo, the Memo Core, as they call it, the Mego Core release for handheld devices right now is not usable. Yeah. Um, I mean, as a dev, it's usable. It's well, and got, that's I think why they focused on the netbook so yeah, far. Yeah. It's it's it the the netbook UI is very much Moblin. It is an updated version of Moblin, mm-hmm. um, and that's fine because I mean we've talked about Moblin in the past, and it's very good. Yeah, it was it did a lot of things very right from the UI. So why not? It makes a good uh, netbook OS. My concern here is that the applications being developed for Mamo Five currently for the N nine hundred are just simply not going to port that well they have into to, this yeah. new UI and infrastructure. Yeah. I'm hoping I'm wrong there, and I'm hoping it will take very little effort once we finally see what the UI looks like for handheld devices on Mego. Because currently, we don't have any... We don't have a screenshot. Right. If you load it up on your N900 right now, it will boot. You will get a command line, and there's a little X11 server and all that sort of thing. Uh, but there's no there's no base desktop environment. There's no uh, there's no real graphical tools to work with. Nothing. Right. It's it's just a base core system. Well, now what do you think of their of approach against? of uh, you know focusing on netbook releases right now? Because if you think, uh, I I believe Intel. What, right. To run it on a netbook, you have to have a netbook that has an Intel Atom CPU yep. and uh, Intel graphics. Yeah. It's I've, very limiting. I foresee an Intel tablet that ships with a super low power Atom, yeah. a new a new class of Atom processor, uh, integrated new class of integrated graphics. Yep. And I think these netbook resolutions are going to be the resolution of this tablet. So if you start programming Mego now, maybe it'll easily translate. That's the hope. But here's the thing, is I don't think Intel or Nokia or the Mego, Mego group, who uh, I've looked into and I'm impressed with structure-wise, they have a very open wiki where you can see yes. their corporate or project layout. But my, my concern here is, is I'm not seeing any, motivational, any motivational item that would make me develop for Mego right now. And here's no. my, follow my train of thought here. Um, Android, Chrome, and iPad. Chrome OS, I mean. Android, Chrome OS, and iPad all share one thing in common as far as applications go. If you make a nice, rich HTML5 application, which Google is super pushing right now, and they're trying to show you, you know, we're going to introduce the ability yeah. to do yeah. capture audio, GPS location, 3D acceleration through HTML5, all of these things, why am I going to develop for Mego? And I don't think Intel is doing, and Nokia are doing a good enough job communicating to that to me. I don't, I see a lot of potential here with Mego, but I don't see where it fits yet. No, I see what you're saying. I, I, I'm 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 with you on that. Uh, my my concerns are a little bit a little bit different than that. Um, my concerns are here we've go we've we've got Mego 1.0 only for netbooks or potentially for tablets or, or whatever, but a netbook sized version of it. Yeah, the UI is not at all ready. I mean, it's not even available for the handheld side. Right, right. Which makes me stop and think, how different is it going to be? And well, and like, right what, now, what are we going to get on the handheld side? Are we going to end up with a system that is almost night and day different from the the netbook side? We we don't know. That information is just not available right. to the public. That concerns me a little bit right now. Um, as a developer, I'm like, well, what am I really developing against? Are these really two different OSs? Am I developing Mego Netbook and Mego Handheld? Well, let it's me show like, you something. Am I developing a Windows app and Have a you, Windows CE app? One it's of the like things I've noticed so is that know. they're bundling, the default applications they're bundling with are, in some cases, retouched up uh, or sometimes almost exact the copies of Linux desktop apps. Yeah. So this is a really interesting way to take desktop Linux apps that might be uh, kind of obscure and mainstream them. And, you know, maybe sometimes also to its weakness, Evolution is the default mail client. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I've had issues with Evolution. Now, they can work on that. They can make it better. But I wonder when your platform is going to ship with these as default, yep. if if I if I perceive a lack of what's the point of Mego, what are the open source developers of Banshee and... Evolution going to think when when Intel or Nokia comes to them and says, or the Mego project comes to them and says, "Hey guys, you know how your IMAP backend checks the server in these kind of orders? Well, that takes a ton of battery power, and we think we could save ten percent battery power a day if you did right. this kind of pulling." And Evolution is going to look at that and go, 
Yeah, but that would take us months to pull off for you. Why would we do that? Well, then, well, but then if, it's, it's up to the Migo project to submit those things. If they want I, them, I they think them. if they reached out to those communities a little better, if they became if they became a better known presence, like if yeah. they really involved themselves with the Linux community, I think they might go and look at that and go, "Oh yeah, Migo, yeah." You, I mean, right now it's like, wait, who are you? What are you doing here? Well, now I'm sure Evolution's the, paying attention because uh, they've included on, on them. On the flip side, though, I mean, like on the Mamo side of things, you're already seeing a lot of this. I mean, there are a lot of Linux desktop applications available for for the Mamo tablet, and, and I'm Hell, sure Evolution can, can would run, be pleased to have. You can run KDE four and GIMP yeah, and yeah, OpenOffice yeah, yeah. and everything on those. Things. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, so and I mean, they're thrilled by it. So, so really, this is just a continuation of that freedom trend. I mean, that's 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 to, really to me, the that's almost some of the most Nokia inspired aspect of this. Yes. I love that. It um, is good because if you that means your data, your data moves, your your usage paradigms move, everything you know about how to operate that interface and what yeah. that application can do completely translate, which makes you much more efficient right out of the gate on that much device. more efficient. Yeah. Um, and, and it brings up the quality of the desktop versions. And and of course theoretically you know, the, the latest versions of KDE or no, sorry, not KDE, but QT are uh, you know, in, in incorporated into it for both the handheld and the netbook versions. So developing QT-based applications uh, should run pretty nicely across all of them. So that's yeah. very, very, very nice. See, the chat room is agreeing with us. They're saying that it looks like, you know, essentially they're putting a product out there and just hoping word of mouth will, we'll, will be we'll, enough we'll, to win people we'll over. Move it around, yeah. And it just seems like if you're coming in at this stage now, now one of the things like, that they're not doing, which would have been bad, is they're, this looks really full-featured. It really does. And so it's not like they're kind of trying to compete in an Android and iPad world without all the features, so that's good. No, no, they're 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 coming in and their their basket is full of goodies. There's no doubt they're not. And the speed they're not good. some also ran in terms right. of, of coming in with. And they're backed by big names. They're backed by huge names. Oh, and I want to mention this before I forget it. All right. Uh, they're actually somewhat involved on the Novell side as well. Uh, the the uh, the OpenSUSE build service. Um, they're utilizing that for building the software Genius. applications across the multiple types of Mego devices. I think so if we're you have gonna... Mego handheld, Mego tablet, Mego, Mego netbook. Go through. Uh... You put your project in there, send it through the Open Build service. Boom! Translates it all down to. Uh, it makes it available for all the different versions of Mego. That's really that's a great use of the build different service. everything. We we awesome. got to get uh, somebody on the show to talk about the Open SUSE build service. We really do because I mean honestly I think it's. Phenomenal. Yeah, um, I've I've looked into it a little bit. I've had some issues with it, but like it's, it's they're, they're it, revving but it's it now. They're, I think it's I think they've got a whole new uh, a whole new release coming oh, out of yeah. the build service. They got so. a whole new release coming out. We we really should get someone on here who's involved with the project and really speak to it intelligently because it is a very cool project and it it deserves some uh, it deserves some attention, yeah. and some love. For, yeah, for, I mean for, for sure. What a great way to use it uh, is. Build build a, a release like that for multiple targets. I think that's genius. It's it's great. So, so I do have some some concerns. So, all right, lay it on me. Overall, I am very excited and very happy that Migo 1.0 is available because they just announced this project three months ago. Yeah, less than three months ago. Yeah, it was January. It was was January, it? February, so, March. Okay, maybe a little bit more than three. Yeah, months yeah, ago. Maybe but more like soon. Four. It was early. It's very very recent. And that's a very quick turnaround uh, in terms of this sort of project. This yep. is awesome. And we know that this sort of project wasn't ongoing for years and years as a yeah. behind-the-scenes project. Now, these project. are people that really know their stuff, I think. They, they've been doing a phenomenal job. And so that makes me very excited. That makes me optimistic that the when the handheld version ships, which I, I'm sure it will in the next two to three months, just like they're saying it will, uh, it will be full-featured and it will be very, very cool. Mm -hmm. I'm very confident of that at this point. Yeah, what you I'm think a so? little concerned. Oh yeah, I, I'm for sure. Yeah, I mean they they've I got agree. they've got big players behind it. Uh, they've got a proven track record of shipping cool stuff yeah, on across all the all of them, and they've already shown us that they can come out of the gate and produce a something great product. cool. So that's great. My concern lies more in the fact with there are no handheld devices presently shipping that we know will be supported by it, which means so so. But as far as business partners go, you've got Nokia. Right. And Intel. And these two guys are amazing at shipping mobile products. Here's here's my problem though. Nokia, just like this last week, uh, unveiled they they've got they got kind of like we've got this new Symbian based phone. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Symbian. Awesome. It looks it doesn't look that great. No. I, I mean <laughs> I, I I'm I'm I got a lot of love for Nokia. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not going to hide any of that. Um, but I also have to be brutally honest when things just don't look interesting. That The phone does not look interesting. Throw Symbian away. 
That's music you might be hearing now is the Symbian uh, or is the Nokia N8 uh, introduction video. Which, uh, uh, you know, the screenshots look great, but I, I watched a walkthrough video of it. And, and not good. Yeah. No, it's it's a dated OS. It, it needs does feel to like go. It. It, especially when I would when love to see got Migo on this on Mamo or Migo that you can be putting on these devices. So there, there's my issue. The N900 is currently shipping with Mamo 5. It's fast. It's full featured. It's cutting edge, great hardware that honestly puts iPhone 3GS and all sorts of other things to shame. So why is it that we're not getting that? Why is it that we're not getting Migo on that? What that means? Maybe is it will soon. The official statement here. I'll, I'll oh, bring you got this something up. for us? Um, what do you got there? Uh, hold That's on. That's interesting hold on. because I would have thought that was Nokia's major motivation behind uh, developing this platform. <laughs> I would have thought it would be to eventually ship it one day on, on one of their. Uh, All right, moving away phones. from the update. Uh, this is a official quote uh, from uh, from the press. From uh, is this an official press release or just? All right, so this is this is part from conversations at Nokia.com. Uh, this is uh, from or Memo.org. The, uh, or, no, no, no. This is uh, sorry. No, no, from Nokia.com. Oh, okay. Uh, this is uh, uh, one of this is talking about the uh, N900. Oh, this is a thread from release. a Nokia employee posted in the Nokia. Right. Form. So moving away from the update and to yeah. look at Migo and the N900, many of you have been asking whether the new Migo platform will be supported on the N900 once it's device ready. Although Nokia N900 devices are being used for platform development and testing purposes by those involved with the Migo project, we don't have plans for a full-scale commercial Migo upgrade on the N900. Right. The reason, it's really about ensuring that you have the best possible experience designed for the features on your Nokia N900 device. Nokia realizes this news may be a disappointment for some. Rest assured that Nokia will continue to support the core MAMO software on your Nokia N900 as evidenced by the 1.2 update available today, they, and, they, and they have been updating it. So mm -hmm. there's there's no doubt they're drop they're not dropping it. They're they're supporting it. Right. But here's the thing. So as a developer, um, or even as a user wanting to see more applications available for well, the phone, when you want to know the phone you bought is supported or the device, yeah. Right. So uh, the the concern here is that it, it's sending a message that developers can't rely on the platform available. That's the wrong message to be sending for both developers because then they're just not going to make the software for that platform or for your new platform and for users because then they're going to think oh yeah. my this new phone i, I buy won't have you've, all the you've apps got to you've it. got to counter it with but here's the platform you should target right and why yes why you know why over why? android why over windows mobile 7 now, over now I have I, to say, I, iphone from from a nerd standpoint migo and memo are heads and tails above Heads and shoulders, whatever. Heads and knees. Let's go heads and, and knees. You know what? Above uh, Android, iPhone, all of them, and it's an open platform from fast a too. usability it's really perspective. Fast. It's it is a fast OS. It's fast. It's feature rich. You can install whatever you want on it with no restrictions in any way, shape, or form. The friggin' what? thing's got a full package that management blew my mind, suite. Dude. You can install all sorts of stuff. There's a great community of people I'm porting the, uh, Linux on the desktop apps to it. Video That's version, awesome. I'm showing the package manager right now. Oh, I was. And it's just this really nice, slick, click-click interface. And, yep. um, jeez, I just... It's great. But, but... They're not being clear about what 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 exactly are we going for for Migo and on a handheld. This is information that just isn't out there. Do are we going to get um, an N901? Are we going to get an N1000? Well, I can understand they don't want to talk about upcoming product releases, no, I but know, I but, but you want to know as a developer what you can get behind that. But exactly, isn't that the point of doing it on the netbook? So that, that way you just write for the netbook now and then eventually. As technology, as, as maybe it towards the help. end of the year, it those parts help. will just make it into a tablet. It does help, but but there are there are a lot more considerations than just the you know the, yeah. that. I, I mean, found it interesting they're getting a lot of heat for. We still don't know what the the handheld side looks like. Right, and and that uh, designing for a click and point you know? versus a touch interface is right. totally is it, is different. Is it going to be uh, is it going to be stylusy like the current one we have? Is it going to be purely finger based? Right. Um, are we going to go? Are we going to move away from touch screen? Like what what are they going to do? We don't have that information now. We need it in order to be able to make for it. Like a uh, a good example. So currently, uh, my my project, the Illumination Software Creator, builds Memo applications. Right. That's it's awesome because so you have you a Mamo can, device you can test on. I have a Mamo device yeah, that I can test yeah, on, yeah. and there's good you know Mamo SDKs and everything available, so I can build, so I can use Illumination Software to make a Mamo app. So I, now I'm looking at this. I'm like, you know what, me goes out. 
obviously I want illumination. And you obviously don't want it just as a netbook OS. No. Because first of all, tablets are probably gonna eventually kind of replace netbooks. Right. And Plus, you've got, already got a bunch of great desktop operating systems for netbooks. And there's no market share for this. But this currently. is faster. This is I mean, this turns it's a netbook great. into a rocket. It's great. I'm not gonna disagree with you. I just there's nothing shipping with it, which there shouldn't be. There shouldn't well, be. Well, there's desktop apps. Oh, no, 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 you mean no, no, no devices? Like hardware. hardware yeah. Yeah, there shouldn't be. Yeah. So I'm not knocking them on that. Yeah, not yet. It's that with the handheld side, we have a perfectly good handheld for it. Please just 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 make it work. If you can't make yeah. the N900 fully functional, and I guess Nico, the argument would be it's not enough a for a netbook. It's not an, it's not enough to do. It's not enough just to do a netbook OS. Or do you think it is? I th- I think it it might be, but that's not what. Or their goal is to have is. Their, ne- their goal is to have a netbook OS and a tablet OS just sort of become one and a handheld OS that are that completely would be different. O- no, well, it would be awesome if you could have the same OS across three form factors. Well, that's the thing. We need to, we need that information. Mm-hmm. So so I'm a little concerned. Why about else that. would you Why else would you bet the farm on it? Right. You need to know right. more about you it. Need, we need to know more. Um. So now that said, they've been very clear that we're going to get the handheld version in August. I believe it's August, they said. It's either late July or August that okay. they were talking about. So it's coming. So it's not going to be far out. So, you know, by the time later this year, we'll be looking at it hard and fast and really able to say. And luckily, we will be able to install it on the N900 from a developer standpoint to really take it for a spin and kick the tires. So I'm looking forward to that. That is pretty good overall. So I'm I'm excited. The technology looks good. It's just I feel I, I I feel a little bummed out that we're not going to get it officially. It's early days, on, Brian. On the, on the uh, thing. I'm a little bummed out that you were right. And you were when you said we're not going to get this on the N nine hundred. Well, you do officially. get the dev build though. Yeah, so you and can still like guys like us could still play with it. And I'm gonna. I just you're not going to walk into Best Buy, pick up an N nine hundred in in five months, and have me go on. And it, there's though. actually even a project if you're a, like an N eight ten user. There's projects available currently. Uh, you remember the Mayor project, M E R? So uh, uh, it started a little ways back. We covered them very briefly. It was basically a project to provide a currently supported, completely open source uh, OS for small scale devices. Oh, okay. And it was very similar to MAMO. It was essentially based on MAMO. Um, now they've kind of stopped development of that and they said, you know what, we're going to focus on making Mego available on a broader range of hardware. Um, so, uh, so Maybe. N810s, N800s, uh, and various other form factor cool. tablets. They're focusing on making that uh, the Mego OS as it stands now. That would be really on a neat, dude. Uh, uh, so, I mean, it, 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 sometimes cool. community support support is even better than uh, a lot of times. Yeah, like yeah. like for my Droid here, I've got a community ROM on here because they go out and get the best stuff from the different phones yeah. out there, and then they have like this whole community that like has these tested ROMs that are certified as stable. And I don't, I don't even run stock Android anymore. You don't need to. I don't need to now. Yeah. If I was gonna get, yeah. you know, like my clients, I have clients that have a Motorola Droid. I don't replace their OS. Stay with stock. Stay with so stock. So if you got a piece of hardware, you might eventually get away. You'll have a way to run Mego and check it out. But if you do have a, a an Atom based netbook with an Intel graphics, you can rock with it right now. Check it out. It's really cool. With a few caveats, there's a few netbooks that aren't working hundred percent. Yeah, and uh, you don't have to overwrite your OS. You can run it off a USB thumb drive. The performance is great that way. Uh, I have a little HP Mini 1000. Was having a hard time getting Wi-Fi working on it, um, so so there's issues still. But mm-hmm. 1.0. They were taking a lot of heat for on. not having uh, it work in a virtual machine, but that's just due to I'm the okay with that. 3D acceleration yeah. requirement. That's all right. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously a virtual machine would be easy for us because then we could walk you through it. We in could the show video, it on the air. It's yeah. very handy. But honestly, I don't want them scrimping on the performance just so that the virtual machine works. You that, heard it here. That'd be silly pants. Don't scrimp. Don't scrimp, guys. Make it rad. So anyway, so that's that, that's kind of a little talk about it. Um, when the handheld version ships, we'll do a full review yeah. somehow. We'll, yep. we'll get it on a device. We'll yep. we'll stick it on some netbooks. I'm sure they'll be revving the netbook version of it pretty rapidly over the next few months because they've been moving fast as is. Yeah. And uh, we'll do a full-on review. But anyway, if you're interested, go check it out. Uh, me go. And uh, you know, let us know what you think. Definitely. Head over to jupitercolony.com and give us your feedback. All right, everyone. Well, that's the Linux Action Show's look at Migo 1.0. And that brings us to the end of this week's super amazing broadcast of Awesome. Yeah. And Thanks. I just want to say, hey, Brian, yeah, before you happening? thank everybody, well, we got to just thank people here, Chris. Well, we'll thank them. All right. But first, uh, I just want to say congratulations on 1.0 on uh, Illumination Software oh, Creator. Oh, yeah. This has been... This has been, I mean, I know I've talked about it a fair bit on the show, but this little thing You've started some work development on this thing. Uh, two and a half years ago. I don't know. I was trying to figure out exactly when I started the first initial project on this. And I, 
I think it was sometime in 1972, <laughs> give or take. And so you just got 1.0 out, and you're already on 1.1, 1. 1, dude. Yeah, yeah, you're one, a machine. Dude, well, 1.1 1. 1 is in beta right now. Uh, if you're interested, you can go to go to RadicalBreeze.com or uh, my blog at Lunduke.com. I'm blogging about it like every other day right now. It's adorable. Um, and uh, there's, a, there's a forum over at uh, RadicalBreeze.com slash forum where people are, you know, trying out the betas, kicking them for a spin, taking them for a spin, see how it goes. Some people have already done some crazy things with it. Some guy was building a little RPG with it. Uh, uh, people have been making tons of little tiny games That's with it. Cute. Uh, people have been having a blast. Uh, uh, hey, we got know, a also, couple of teachers playing with it now. It's awesome. Oh, it, it's awesome very, school. very satisfying. Where's the form address? Because that's really cool form software. Uh, people just want to oh, check that no, out. Yeah, yeah. Check out. Oh, it's uh, it's. Uh, uh, just w, go to radicalbreeze.com. Uh, yeah, go to radicalbreeze.com slash forum. It's, it's forum software it's from the dudes BB that made Press. WordPress. BB Press. BB Press. BB Press. Uh, Bulletin Board Press. Uh, it's it's great. It, it's really fast. It's really nice. It lacks a few features that like you know some of the other forums have. Out of the box, no file attachment support or anything like that. But come on, how often do you need that? That's what you can link to stuff for. That's what I'm thinking. So Anyway, go check it out. So we shipped 1.0. We shipped 1.0 with the ability to build. He's just we as Radical Breeze. Radical Breeze. Not I'm not, not a Jupiter software developer. I don't know. Uh, no. So it shipped it as uh, uh, you can make a Python GTK desktop apps for, you know, for Mac and Windows and Linux. Rad. Uh, the ID itself runs on Linux and Windows. No Mac support as yet. And, you know, here's why. Getting Python and oh. whatnot running under, on the Mac oh, side. Oh, pain in the butt. Royal pain in the butt. Uh, on Linux, you just got it. Yeah. Like you just, oh, yeah, yeah. You just total. have power. Absolutely. That's the thing. You sit down at a Linux computer That's and you turn it on and you're like, oh, look at all that power I get. Because 70% of the apps are written in Python. <laughs> Dude, it's just so great. Uh, getting it's it like running, everybody loves that. Uh, getting it running on Windows is actually a little bit of a pain. Mm. So I, I put up on uh, RadicalBreeze.com, there's like a little set of, the if you want to work, you need. here's five things yeah. you install. And, and here's the thing. But you if you've got like Pigeon stuff. In a specific order. If you've got Pigeon and stuff, do you already have a lot of that stuff? You have a lot of that stuff already. So, so you know, it's it's not too hard, uh, but you know, just the same. All right. um, and it cool. also, as I said before, you can make Memo applications for it. So if you've got a little N810 or N900, uh, boom, you can spit out a, a little Memo application. Pretty uncle. cool. We're adding in uh, like a 1.1. We got beta going. We're adding in like picture support so you can do all sorts of like drawing and stuff. Nice. So people making games can draw pictures. Pretty little pictures. School kids will love that. Of of, uh, of pretty little of happy little trees and pretty little mountains. The and school such. kids will love that, dude. It's it's awesome. Uh, and then uh, I'm not. Uh, we're not announcing the the 2.0 plans yet. But uh, the one little tidbit I want to let people know is uh, the 2.0 upgrade will be free uh, if you have a 1.0 uh, version. Oh, that's nice. And the 2.0 will add support for several new platforms. Uh, we've already got it mostly working. Um, I think I know, but I'm not going to say. Yeah, you don't don't say don't All say. Right. But several new platforms and several new targets. Okay. Uh, so kind of exciting. Again, if you're interested, head over radicalbreeze.com, lunduke.com. All those other websites, fantastic. It's for sale now, and you can buy it. And there's a free upgrade to 2.0. And I like plugging myself, so I just did it a lot. All right, a lot. Now remember, next also I episode, have pretty hair. Uh, my glasses are nice, and they're gonna what, be able to shoot you in the face next episode. Oh, dude. Yeah, next episode, you can shoot the me in the face. anniversary of the Linux Action Show. Join us live awesome. on Sunday. We do it at 10 a.m. Pacific. So join us at 10 a.m. Pacific next Sunday to shoot us in the face on our birthday. On our birthday. We'll have to, we'll have to get the rest of the Jupiter Broadcasting crew involved somehow. If they're I up know, early enough. I know they're not, uh, Jeremy's they're up not now, Linux though. guys, but you know, we'll, get, we'll get Jeremy and uh, the guys over at the Lotso show. And Don't, we'll no, get everyone shoot in, everybody in the face. And you can just shoot Jupiter Broadcasting folks right in the <laughs> face. Uh, so if you're tired of Brian plugging himself so much, just shoot me right in the face. All right, everyone. Well, that'll you get be one day to do it next week over at JupiterBroadcasting.com, and uh, we'll see you then. And until then, Fantastic. thanks so much for watching. Did we, did this we mention episode. JupiterColony.com? Well, I mentioned it earlier in the show. I didn't want to be obnoxious, but if you want to give us some feedback, wait, wait, wait. You know what? There's other links. Find them. Whoa! Just go find them. There is a contact us page. No, no, including no. the phone. Okay. Don't all right, it. all right. I won't give any hints. Don't give hints. All right. You know, we'll see you. We'll, we'll just we'll just leave it at that, and we'll Don't. see you next Don't week. Nothing. Thanks for watching. Later, guys. Why do we whisper that? I don't know. I don't either.